Hi everyone, I'm Simon and welcome to Cold Water Tanks. Uh, some of you might remember I recently posted a video from my, my newest tank, uh, a little 70 liter tank made with uh, my clingfish in mind, but also inhabited by some of my most favorite inverts, like a sea spider, feather star and more. I set my crab traps a bit deeper in October and November, and since then I came across another couple of these awesome sea spiders. And after a little bit of research, I believe this is probably a Nymphon gracile, if that is how it's pronounced, which is supposedly a quite common sea spider on our shores. And one of them suddenly had this clump of white stuff attached to it, which I don't think it had when I found it. I'm wondering if these might be eggs. If anyone knows, then please leave a comment. If you want to see how this little tank project will turn out in the future, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to make sure you'll see when I upload a new video. Now, some of the small shrimps seem to be annoying the spiders once in a while. I think they're trying to eat some of the stuff on the, on the spider's legs. got quite the intimidating look these creatures, but uh, luckily they are completely harmless. Uh, one of the spiders have been in my tank for quite a while now, and, uh, and I still haven't seen it eat anything. I'm trying to read up on what they eat, which is uh, supposedly coelenterates, uh, which according to Wikipedia are coral animals, fruit jellies, sea anemones, uh, sea pens and, uh, and relatives. I decided to go down to one of the local floating docks to see if I could find something that I could hopefully get the spiders to eat. And I got this new GoPro 11 that I'm playing around with a little bit. I still have to get used to this thing, but uh, I think I can get some cool footage for this eventually. These floating docks are loaded with life and uh, equally accessible no matter if it's high or low tide, which is great. These chunks of sea squirts are everywhere on ropes in these areas. On the bottom there you can see a school of juvenile coalfish. I mean, there's usually quite a few of these in uh, around docks like this. There's always loads of mussels and anemones on the walls of the floating docks. Most of the anemones here are frilled anemones in different sizes, uh, but you can also find uh, dahlia anemones in between. Some juvenile fish swimming around there too. It really is a fascinating world just under the surface here. Bigger anemones are usually stuck to the walls of the dock, so they can be difficult to get off. But a lot of smaller anemones are growing on the mussels here, so getting some for a tank is, is really easy. And some of the bigger ones can also be found stuck to pieces of kelp and macroalgae. Here you can see one of the bigger sea slugs in my area. 
It's a common grey sea slug. I'm going to set up a tank to try to keep this nudie branch at some point, as it's one that should be relatively easy to keep alive as they feed on anemones. Yeah, and they're simply awesome looking, especially with a bit of flow. Here's what I decided to bring home. I collected a few blue mussels uh, loaded with smaller anemones. I am a bit wary of adding any anemones as I know the feather star can easily break apart. But I'm hoping these anemones are too small to cause a problem. Uh, this kind of anemone don't have very strong tentacles like some of the other anemones. So I'm hoping for the best here. Also adding this little sea squirt and uh, a little bunch of hydroids that uh, grow on ropes around here. Uh, this cute little critter came with uh, the seaweed stuck to one of the mussels. I have no idea what these are, but there were several of them in there. I'm sure they won't last long though, because uh, I'm sure the clingfish will double these up eventually. I'm really hoping the sea spiders will find something they fancy among all this, and I'm sure the macroalgae here will wither away eventually, I'll probably remove it quite soon, as I don't want it to make a mess in the tank. I'm sure the anemones on these muscles will crawl off the muscle eventually, so I'll just take out the muscles when that happens. Here's another little hitchhiker. Not really sure what this is, but uh, hopefully nothing that will cause, uh, cause any trouble. It's looking cool, whatever it is. Uh, one of the sea spiders in there has something growing or attached to one of its legs. I'm thinking maybe it's tiny hydroids. And it's also missing one of its legs, but it doesn't seem to be bothering it too much. And this happened before I got it, so it probably won't be a problem, I think. Uh, the face of these guys are so cool. doing some self-grooming now. These are quickly turning into my favorite tank meets.
A fun fact about sea spiders, uh, they don't have any gills or lungs, uh, so oxygen is actually absorbed by their legs and transported around from there. And because of their small body size, most of their internal organs are actually in their legs. And some sea spiders get huge, with a leg span of up to 70 centimeters, which is 28 inches. And sea spiders are not true spiders. I'm not gonna try pronouncing that, you can see their classification down there. And much to my surprise, it didn't take long for the spiders to sense a prey in there. Uh, the first victims were the hydroids, and I'm really happy about that, as uh, these should be relatively easily accessible. I'm just hoping they're also this high up in the water during winter, as the temperature gets really low so close to the surface. I just had to zoom in on the attack here. So cool. I love seeing how they feed, like sucking the life out of their prey. Just can't not love these critters. You can see something moving inside its proboscis here. And one of the spiders seemed to go for one of the anemones too, so finding food for these, uh, these spiders seems to be a lot easier than I first feared. The little macroalgae hitchhikers are still with us for now. They're cute little buggers actually. I've also added a lot of these tiny shrimp for my clingfish to feed on. Anyways, that's all for this video, hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please hit the like button, as that would help my channel, 
And if you're new to my channel and want to see more, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you'll see when I upload the new video. Also, please leave a comment if you have any kind of feedback, questions or suggestions about the tank or my videos. I really do appreciate it. So until next time, thanks for watching.